Yeah. All right. Okay, hello everyone. Masturi here. Hold on, I want to share my slides. Technical error. Okay, this is my slide. Before I start, uh, can somebody help me, you know, with those pictures in this slide, except my picture and VLC 16. What do you see with this uh, picture on your left in the middle and, you know, the watermelon there? So, What do you see in this picture? Chat ke uh, online? Yeah. You nak cakap ke boleh ke online book type. Buah, buah apple. Veggie. These are fruits veggie and vegetables. And fruits. Because there's a campaign uh, last time when we when we were with this PPBM Persatuan yeah. Pengatu Berdaftar Malaysia. Yeah. We did launch this uh, for young children eating veggies and uh, fruits because food and nutrition for young children, talking about this uh, kind of food, it is vegetables and fruits. So why do I choose food and nutrition? <laughs> why do I choose food and nutrition? Because first, food, I am a food lover. And I believe we need to eat to live, or we live to eat. Which one is correct? <laughs> we live to eat, or we we live to eat. Okay, let me introduce. This is me, Masuri Binti Madesa. I'm a full time lecturer in City University, located in Petaling Jaya. Uh, I've been with this early childhood education for 20 years. Mula-mula I buka taska, you know, and then after I completed my uh, master, I become full-time lecturer in year 2016. And I am one of the accredited trainers for Permata Negara because in Malaysia, as you want to run your own center, childcare center, taska, so the the minimum requirement for uh, to run the TASCA, you need to have this certificate, the basic childcare course. Okay, so ever since year 2000, I'm a practitioner because I used to have my own TASCA, but in year 2016, when I started uh, to become a full-time lecturer. Uh, and I was a trainer, first trainer for Gap Mara when they started the childcare course program with Gap Mara in year 2010 and uh, until 2013. So Gap Mara is one of the government agency running skills based for teenagers. Yeah, so I train because per intake that time for childcare course about 19 per intake six months certificate level. Okay, that's about me. All right. So the objective of this uh, session to provide participant and understanding the needs of balanced nutrient for, in, for babies and toddlers. But it, this is very brief. Okay. In this picture, there were always a junction, yeah? Junction to junk food, not healthy food, or junction which will guide us to a healthy food. And I would like to share one of the theory, yeah? Albert Bandura. 
copycat whereby children uh because parents we as parents are role model for our children so monkey see monkey do they tengok kita makan mcdonald then they will ask for mcdonald and what and basically most of the time they will ask for this kind of food and parents will just follow sebab nak senang mudah kan so this is our choice as parents as well okay i'm sure there is inner child in everyone even inner child in me so i just created this uh, slide purposely just for us to you know name the fruits games can anyone you you can on your mic i think we better uh, you know do the interactive rather than just typing can we do that name the fruits game we have the yellow we have red uh, fruit we have orange fruit banana banana thank you rogaya hey. because if you do this with children they will be very excited you know cherries 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 yes Thank you, Leila. Pear. Pear, yes. That's great. So I just it's click so and the tagging will come out. Yeah. Side dish or shop. Exploring. Yeah. Okay. Pear. We have tangerine, limau, banana, and we have cherry and apple. And apple, you know, apple. All right. Next slide. This is a. Uh, this is what is this? Maybe you can type in the chat box or you can on your mic. No problem. I'm sure you are familiar with this uh, triangle and the food inside it. You know, we know which to take more, less, you know. This is very. Uh, common but yet into the practice is uh, into the practice with the fruits veggies and all uh, a bit uh, challenging <laughs> so what is this this is a Food pyramid. Food pyramid. Okay, so the bottom level is for carbohydrate. So carbohydrate, when when we do activity with young children, we, we, we normally say you need to eat this because it gives us energy. You need That's to it. eat rice and then you need to eat noodles, you know, the flour base and all that. Because when you, when we do uh, activities or when we talk to young children unless the exposure are very good because i've seen one of the child two years old you know the uh, my student do the activities with her and she will tell uh, us carrot is good for your eyes so the the exposure is very good okay most of the children we just say that you need to eat fruits, you need to eat uh, fruits for your digestion, for your skin complexion, you know, nak cantik tak, ah, kena makan buah, you know, sort of things. So we need this kind of uh, carbohydrate, we need protein. This is the food pyramid uh, by uh, Ministry of Health, yeah? So it's also uh, mentioned here uh, in Malay. Eh? Empat hingga lapan sajian, makan secukupnya, uh, and so on, right to the top. This is food pyramid. Okay, I want to share uh, a video. How the food you eat affects your brain. 
let us watch this video. Because uh, the, the way we encourage children, you know, will affect their cognitive, especially yeah, talking about brain. Cognitive will connect to their language uh, development, to the physical development. Okay. Dengar tak? Can you hear the sound? Ada, ada. Gambar tak ada. Ha, gambar tak ada. Okay. Coming. If you sucked all of the moisture out of your brain and broke it down to its constituent nutritional content, what would it look like? Most of the weight of your dehydrated brain would come from fats, also known as lipids. In the remaining brain matter, you would find proteins and amino acids, traces of micronutrients, and glucose. The brain is, of course, more than just the sum of its nutritional parts, but each component does have a distinct impact on functioning, development, mood, and energy. So that post-lunch apathy or late-night alertness you might be feeling, well, that could simply be the effects of food on your brain. Of the fats in your brain, the superstars are omegas 3 and 6. These essential fatty acids, which have been linked to preventing degenerative brain conditions, must come from our diets. So eating omega-rich foods like nuts, seeds, and fatty fish is crucial to the creation and maintenance of cell membranes. And while omegas are good fats for your brain, long-term consumption of other fats, like trans and saturated fats, may compromise brain health. Meanwhile, proteins and amino acids, the building block nutrients of growth and development, manipulate how we feel and behave. Amino acids contain the precursors to neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers that carry signals between neurons, affecting things like mood, sleep, attentiveness, and weight. They're one of the reasons we might feel calm after eating a large plate of pasta, or more alert after a protein-rich meal. The complex combinations of compounds in food can stimulate brain cells to release mood-altering norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. But getting to your brain cells is tricky, and amino acids have to compete for limited access. A diet with a range of foods helps maintain a balanced combination of brain messengers and keeps your mood from getting skewed in one direction or the other. Like the other organs in our bodies, our brains also benefit from a steady supply of micronutrients. Antioxidants in fruits and vegetables strengthen the brain to fight off free radicals that destroy brain cells, enabling your brain to work well for a longer period of time. And without powerful micronutrients like the vitamins B6, B12, and folic acid, our brains would be susceptible to brain disease and mental decline. Trace amounts of the minerals iron, copper, zinc, and sodium are also fundamental to brain health and early cognitive development. In order for the brain to efficiently transform and synthesize these valuable nutrients, it needs fuel and lots of it. While the human brain only makes up about 2% of our body weight, it uses up to 20% of our energy resources. Most of this energy comes from carbohydrates that our body digests into glucose or blood sugar. The frontal lobes are so sensitive to drops in glucose, in fact, that a change in mental function is one of the primary signals of nutrient deficiency. Assuming that we are getting glucose regularly, how does the specific type of carbohydrates we eat affect our brains? Carbs come in three forms, starch, sugar, and fiber. While on most nutrition labels, they are all lumped into one total carb count, the ratio of the sugar and fiber subgroups to the whole amount affect how the body and brain respond. A high glycemic food, like white bread, causes a rapid release of glucose into the blood, and then comes the dip. Blood sugar shoots down, and with it, our attention span and mood. On the other hand, oats, grains, and legumes 
have slower glucose release, enabling a steadier level of attentiveness. For sustained brain power, opting for a varied diet of nutrient-rich foods is critical. When it comes to what you bite, chew, and swallow, your choices have a direct and long-lasting effect on the most powerful organ in your body. Okay. Uh, I would like to emphasize on the micronutrients. When we have a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, it will protect, you know, shield to the brain, especially for young children. And uh, talking about foods yeah, and nutrition, it is based uh, the same principles as nutrition for adults. Adults also need the, the nutrition as well as young children. But you see, for example, like babies, why we encourage uh, moms to breastfeed until six months? Yeah, Breast, breastfeed their babies up to six months. After six months, then only you give solid food. First, because of the organ. Their organ are still small you know, to digest, to process, you know. And then veggies and fruits give them uh, the nutrients that they need. Okay, and everyone needs the same types of nutrients, such as vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, protein, and also fat. And children, need different amounts of specific nutrients at different age, yeah? For example, uh, talking about nutrients, protein. We can choose uh, from seafood, lean meat and poultry, eggs, beans, peas, soy products, and unsalted nuts and seeds. How about fruits? Uh, we need to encourage uh, young children to eat a variety of fresh, frozen or dried fruits. Okay, or we can uh, make juice, yeah? Prepare juice and let them drink. Because if your child drinks juice, but make sure it is 100% juice, yeah? Without added sugars and limit his or her savings. Okay. Uh, veggies, vegetables, serve a variety of fresh, frozen or dried, uh, not, not advisable dried veggies. Better fresh, isn't it? Yeah, because we need to uh, pro pro provide variety veggies, especially green veggies. How about grains? Okay, we're supposed to choose a uh, whole grain, such as whole meat, whole wheat bread, oatmeal, you know, and so on. Yeah. So let me proceed to the next um, slide. So, as you can see, this is one infographic. Uh, this is from the Asian uh, Post. It is regarding the statistic on the obesity. Yeah. This is interesting because according to this uh, Asian Post, because of this Malaysia's food culture, so from this variety of age, we go and lepak mama. For example, one of the example, yeah, because Malaysia's being Malaysian, Malaysian food culture may bond people together over a variety of meals. But this same food culture has led, you know how many percent? 13.3% of Malaysians becoming obese. Do you know that this is the highest among Southeast Asia's Asian countries. According to the UNICEF, United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, based on their survey, 
it is 12.7% of Malaysian children. Guess what age the range? Can you guess? It is about five years to 19 years old. Are uh, obese. This is the second highest in Southeast Asia behind Brunei. Most alarming is that 7.1% of overweight Malaysian children are under the age of five. Okay, five little fingers, five year old. All right, so um, it is quite serious, quite critical. Uh, okay, I took one of the, this is a celebrity chef, UK chef, Jamie Oliver. Jamie said in uh, his TED talk, I wish for everyone to help create a strong, sustainable movement to educate every child about food, inspire families to cook again and empower people everywhere, everywhere to, fight, to fight obesity. Because nowadays, uh, especially this PKP, lagi senang, you just call, your, the food will arrive at your doorstep. Food panda lah, grab, grab food lah, apa lagi? You name it, even my, my housing area, we just look through into the WhatsApp, so many menus are there. You just WhatsApp them and the food will arrive at my doorstep. But yet, you know, when we cook, sorry, I scream. Makul, makul lalu. Aduh. <laughs> so, because uh, I still remember those days when talking about, uh, you know, to cook again. Inspire families to cook again. We normally buy or, you know, we normally go to restaurant to eat. Because now talking about parents, both are busy working parents. So the best is eating outside food. But yet, when we come to healthy eating lifestyle, sometimes you don't have to cook, you know, like sandwiches, uh, fruits. Uh, what else? No need to cook. Can you name me any other recipe? No need to cook. Bento fruits. You know, some parents, they are very committed and they are really look into this uh, eating healthy, you know. So roja, some, Roja. Roja, yes. Roja also can. Thank you, Kak Gaya. Anybody else? No need to cook. Uncook. What else? Because we normally do activities, those, uh, these activities, huh? with young children so the, the the most famous is sandwiches because sandwich fruit salad fruit salad fruit salad yes fruit salad skew uh skew fruits you know and we we can even we can variety oh sorry so talking about food uh in hierarchy Maslow of needs because it is a psychological needs talking about foods because talking about foods and education because basic life needs is of course food one of it is food like air drink shelter you know warm sex and sleep so we are looking into food air drink shelter those sorry Those. how come got echo this is hierarchy mas um, maslow's hierarchy of needs 
the theory that related to food for young children that we normally referring to. Yeah, because how to, 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 to go to the next level, you know, like safety needs, protection, security, order, law limits, and stability, even uh, you doesn't have food on your table. Recently, I watched one of the video in uh, US. One of the family is a middle income family. Talking about family involvement, you know, uh, parents can involve with this uh, activity, you know, food activity by volunteering to do this activity with children in school. Okay. There are a lot of activities. Okay, this is also Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Talking about this triangle, it is similar to pyramid, a uh, food pyramid, but yet talking, uh, breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, you know, this is a physiological needs. Okay. Okay. Huh. Can I have interactive session? Can anybody just on your mic and talk about this picture? This is the real story, yeah. Because of the fast food. Uh, the busy parents, so food and nutrition for young children are being neglected. You know, terlepas pandang. And uh, we have to look uh, into this kind of scenario in a very serious way. Can anybody share with me? You can on your mic. Yeah, la, the, the food is like overdose with the carbohydrates and sugar. Yes, it is very true. Soda, you know, the fast food. Uh, who else want to give uh, your opinion? You can on your mic. Sabaria, Sabaria. Yeah. Puan Sabaria, do you mind to share? But uh, Puan Mas Masuri, yes. is this really because of food or they have some uh, genetic problem? I mean, especially yes. that boy yang di bawah it, tu. Uh, itu boleh contribute. It might be because of the genetic, not only food, lifestyle. Lifestyle, eating habit, lifestyle. One of the factor is from food that that contribute towards this obesity. Uh, no doubt. Maybe there yeah. are also other factors, yeah? Yeah. They eat, yeah, they eat much more than they should, yeah? Yeah. You know, like, uh, if we, we, we can take a lot of uh, carbohydrate, but then you have to balance it with uh, exercise and workout. Especially, uh, you know, the campaign, 10,000 steps a day. We doesn't have to, you know, like uh, jogging, you know, but we can do brisk walk. We need. So is young children. Actually, young children have a lot of energy. They are very energetic, but yet due to this, uh, especially MCO, uh, most of us are in the house. Okay, now only a lot of uh, people are going out for exercise, to do recreation, you know, children got chance to go to the playground. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you mind to share? Hi, uh, Masuri. Yes. That's Yes, thank you. 
Yeah, um, I have uh, one grandson. <laughs> He's 13 years old. And I started uh, with proper diet, which means um, I try and avoid him from eating. Because at home, we don't eat all this um, food that are very highly in sugar and salt, like soda and all the fast food. Because my kid, my grandson, do not like um, what the other children like. You know, like, okay, he will say, he will tell me that, any help about KFC, any help about McDonald's and things like that. So, so yeah. okay. And he is still a doubt that, you know, like, cheats and all those things. not that good for you. And I was like, like, you can't tell a person that you know what what we live at home is our rules in our society. I mean, people look at us differently. All these kind of things. Uh, that's my story. Uh, Mansuri, if you want, <laughs> is that what you wanted? So, like you were saying, that the children duplicate us, right? So uh, at home we eat very healthy. Food. I mean, to us it's not um something different, you know. So every day is not something different. So different So but we can't leave, we can't live away from the normal things like so that it's okay to eat you know, but you don't want to do that every day, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's my sharing. I don't want to take your time. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we can eat, but we have to balance. We need to to do exercise. And uh, you see uh where is it? Very, very true, Kwan Sabaria. Yeah? So, it's just that, do we want to happen to our future generation? So, if you eat a lot, then you have to work out a lot. We have to balance. No problem. Besides that, uh, talking about um, activities with young children also, this food and nutrition, actually, there are a lot of uh, development that engage. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. I already put it aside. Oh, sorry. One mic. Okay. Okay. Because uh, we, early childhood educators, uh, believe that while doing activities, cooking activities, a lot of uh, development will engage, especially, for example, you are preparing, um, you want to bake. You want to bake a uh, cake, yeah? So whenever no, the town is... Um, to measure flour, to measure sugar. Those are mathematic skills, okay? And then when they touch the texture of flour, those are early signs for young children. And then when the uh, early signs, early maths, while doing the cooking, they will have communication which it, with each other. So that is uh, language development and also social emotion development. They can interact, you know, they can actually uh, take turn who's going to stir first, who's next, you know, that is taking turn. And then they, they can early maths, early maths a lot and also physical coordination. When they hold the stool and they stir in the, in the bowl, that is coordination. Those activities will uh, help them in their growth and development, as well as uh, we are exposed them to uh, uh, self-help learning and basic skills. Those days, uh, I still remember uh, when I'm still, uh, you know, during my childhood, 
we normally do role play, you know, pretend to cook and all that. And then after we got married, we need to cook real food. But yet for young children, they love pretend play. Pretend, my masak masak, my mak mak, you know. So if we can really expose them, because if they cook, if they prepare the meal, they will be very excited to eat uh, the, the meal that they have prepared. That is children, the excitement, you know, when they, especially one of our theory, uh, kindergarten theory, Frederick Frobel, he, he actually encouraged one tadika to have one garden. So meaning that, in in your backyard now we have technology you know you can even plan if you're staying in the condominium in apartment you know using this uh, compartment container you can plant you know the, the simplest uh, vegetables uh basil uh spinach bayam brazil you just you know very easy to uh, take care as well and healthy a lot uh, of benefits if we encourage uh, not only children adults also to eat uh, bayam brazil brazil spinach yeah so i think and other than that cooking can enhance communication practicing sharing and taking turn as i mentioned just now and for their sensory senses yeah a great sensory experience and they can discover texture of flour uh, whatever they have prepared for their meal and this is uh, opportunities to challenge children's mathematical and problem solving skills such as weighing and counting ingredients. So how many uh, eggs do we need to put into the to put into the flour to bake a cake? You know, they can count. And after they have uh, molded, so what mold they do, do they want for uh, to bake the cake? You know, that is mathematic shapes, recognize shapes. And uh, color, they can choose colors. That is early mathematics for young children, okay? Because children love to cook. They will really enjoy it, but you have to um, prepare for the mess. There will be a mess, you know, that we can, we, we can handle it, definitely. Because it is hands-on, messy, and there is a plenty of room for creativity. They can create, you know, they can, come up with their own ideas, okay? And at the end of the session, the satisfaction, the self-satisfaction, the achievement, uh, and enjoy doing uh, hands-on activities, yeah? That is young children. That is how uh, we, we can plan, the vegetables with them. When you are doing the, the gardening, also sensories happen, social emotion development happen and also uh, language development. Because uh, children will, will learn every each activity they do. It is a learning process for them. And they will love to do this kind of activity, hands-on activity. Because according to John Dewey, one of the theory, children learn by doing. Yeah? If they do, they, they really enjoy and they learn at the same time. So this uh, slide, I, I just type there, do we want this happen to our future generations? 
you know, by eating unhealthy food, no exercise, yeah. So, we have to think of this, our future generation, you know, eating, eating habit we have to create because we are the role model, especially parents to our young children. Anything else to ask, to add, maybe sharing? So I think this is the, the message, food and nutrition for young children. Anybody would like to share before we end our session for today? <laughs> Masuri. Yeah. My grandson wants me to share something about him. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, okay. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. When Direct. When he was Direct. Mole, mole. About three or five years old, okay. I, I used to tumble, used to tumble and play games with him, you know, tumbling and things like that. And then when he was like, how old were you that? Um, seven, I think he was 11. He wanted to go to the skating rink. So I took him there and then we were thinking like, okay, we want to watch him, you know, doing it. And um, he just went on to the rink and then he wear his shoes and things like that. And he just like zoom and he just, he got his basic motor skills, he's all there, he's Agility is all there and it's like super and things like that. <laughs> and he, he asked me, please share, please share with you about his uh, sporting activities. And and every time at home, if at five o'clock I see him in front of the television, like you know, he's normally in front, not in front there, but when he's in front of there, I tell him, You are supposed to be out there playing, not in front of the tube. And I mean sometimes he like tends to switch it off, but when he's out there, it's really like it's difficult for him, for him to get back because he's, he loves activities. So it's always good to have them to burn. They are fats. I mean, they are calories. Yes. I mean, if they are fat, the more right. Okay, that's my sharing because he wanted me to share with you. Alama. Okay, <laughs> that's great sharing, Pansabaria. Yeah, huh. and he wants it's... me to play. <laughs> he sits on the other on the other laptop watching because it's in, interests him to to also be part of it. Yeah, I was thinking also, Amasuri. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, some taskers do. I think we should encourage the tasker to grow their own, uh, say, like herbs and vegetables. First of all, it gives experience for the children, and at the same time, it will encourage them to eat the uh, the vegetables uh, that they grow. You know, this is another way of encouraging children to take vegetables. What do you think? Yes. That is correct because according to the theory I mentioned just now, Frederick Frobel, he encouraged one kindergarten with uh, one garden, whether you plant, because it is yeah. also uh, can relate to nurture versus nature. We need to nurture the children, the young children, you know, encourage them to plant because if let's say they plant, the vegetables themselves, they be they be very excited to to have the meal that they plant the plant, you know. In this you know, they will be very excited. Children are full of excitement and positive energy. You know, even uh, young children, like babies, talking about food and nutrition for adults, we when we have uh, babies, you know give us a relaxation it is a therapy as well yeah so it is going to be fun while they are doing the gardening especially when they you know do the mess children love mess just because they are exploring they are learning as I mentioned just now, John Dewey said, children learn by doing. That is why uh, cooking is one of the activities that will encourage uh, young children to 
to develop well and will help their growth and development as well. A lot of sort of like a holistic development will involve, you know, on the physical when they stir, coordination, you know, on the physical. And especially uh, one year old, one year old plus, huh? they have five motor skills. Play Doh, do you know that Play Doh we can do um, on ourselves? We can prepare the Play Doh, especially using the flour, milk, coconut milk. Coconut milk. No, no, sorry. Oil. Uh, you can have oil, the recipe. Oil, coconut oil. Uh, coconut oil. You know, and the. Uh, mm food coloring it is safe for young children that is good for their fine motor skill when they squeeze the dough uh, and they they can squeeze it will enhance their fine motor skill and for bigger children they can you 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 can expose them with the the, the shapes you know heart shape triangle and etc so they will learn about shapes through cooking activities so a lot of activities will involve when children do these cooking activities even by uh, you know if bigger children they can even do brainstorming so what what are we going to to cook, for example, you know, the conversation among them. So we, we encourage the young children to do the brainstorming, to discuss, you know, and those are leadership skills that we, we, we can expose to them. And All right, I think uh, I'm finishing my presentation. Okay. Sorry, my story about the time. Okay. From Sabaria, the son Sherry, my 13 grandson, Chef Adib, is follow my story. Say, oh, thank you, Adib, on my phone, but because she was, I cannot see. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Pan Rosita Kamel. Salam Sharo, so not you dapat solat jumat. Anak buah suka tengok atroman aja. Congratulations! You did it! Yeah. Eh, record. I'm recording. Abe, time's up. Mana? You want to stop recording? Uh, maksud? Yeah, yeah. Kejap kat mana? Just about <coughs> dekat tempat record tu, just stop. Dekat view option tu, you can stop recording. Yeah. Mana? Atasu. You, you stop sharing dulu. Oh. Then you can see oh, the okay. button. Ah, okay. Okay. Then you got button, you just press to stop the recording. Okay.